So I wanted to incorporate some balance board uh, work into my workout routine. Um, I looked at them for years, but the prices anywhere from 125 to 200 always made me just balk a little bit. I'm like, you know, I'm not gonna spend that kind of money. Um, I mean, Indo Board makes some great boards, and Rev Balance, um, Origin makes boards, um, everybody makes boards, but they're all 100 plus. And I'm, I'm a woodworker, so I was like, I'm not paying 125 plus for a piece of plywood. Um, so I decided to make uh, myself a board this Christmas, um, and I made a few others for some friends, um, yeah, some Christmas gifts. Um, I, you know, if you want to make a board, it's pretty simple. Um, I shaped mine a little bit of a surf inspired uh, things going on here, but um, basically about a half inch plywood um, is what most most boards are. Um, you have to have good quality plywood if you're going to do that. I would, if you're going to make your own, I would probably go with three quarter inch. Um, this is bamboo, so I'm not worried about the strength. Um, the fibers are pretty strong. I get a little flex on mine, but it's not too bad. Um, and I'm usually 185 to 200, so you know uh, that's not a big deal. But basically, just making a board is not hard. It's a piece of plywood, um, a couple stops if you want to shape it however you want. Um, the complexity actually came into the roll. Um, initially, my thought was I was just going to, being a woodworker, I was just going to turn myself a wooden uh, wooden roller. Um, which worked okay. The problem that I ran into though was the coefficient of friction when you're on a soft surface like this wasn't enough between the wood of the board and the wood of the roller. Um, so when you, when, sometimes it, when you get a steep angle going, the board will actually slide um, because of the softness of the ground. So um, the friction between the two pieces of varnished wood wasn't quite high enough. So I started tinkering with some other ideas. Um, Wood was, you know, my first choice. Um, if you want to make a roller, the absolute cheapest way I found to do it is get yourself a four-inch piece of sewer pipe, um, PVC, and wrap it in duct tape. Um, it works okay. Um, the friction level is a lot higher um, than with the wood, so you get a you get a pretty good, um, uh, pretty good friction level there, and it works pretty good as a balance board um, with the, uh, the with the sewer pipe. Um, obviously the duct tape is going to get torn up um, over time and you're going to have to replace it. Um, so I was looking for a slightly better solution and I finally figured out a good one today. Um, this. This is a coupling, um, rubberized coupling, that goes between um, two pieces of iron sewer pipe or iron to PVC pipe. And this is a three inch one and I got a piece of three inch um, sewer pipe also. Um, Basically, you just take off these metal grommets or these metal uh, compression clamps, and uh, uh, so that all you're left with is this piece of rubber. Um, and I bought four of them. And basically, they just slide over the pipes like so, and you end up with a really, really grippy pipe that works perfectly for a balance board. Um, now, they aren't the cheapest things in the world. Um, each one of them is six bucks um, at Home Depot, um, about six dollars. So you're talking twenty-four dollars for the um, couplings, um, the rubberized couplings, if you want a 16 inch wide um, roller, which is about the width of my, roll, my board here, so that's about perfect. Um, and then the PVC pipe itself, um, if you buy it in 10 foot um, links, it's usually 15 to $18. Um, if you buy it in a two foot length, which is a nice and convenient size for this particular project, they're gonna charge you 10 bucks for it. So um, they kind of gouge you on that, but overall, your roller is going to end up being about $35 if you want to get the really nice sewer pipe version, which um, I, I, to me seems like the ideal solution for this. Um, but I looked at some other options. And the board actually sells their rollers, but they're, they're 75 bucks a piece. So um, this is still way cheaper than that. Um, they will, the couplings will slide off. Um, if you want to lock, lock them on there permanently and not have to worry about them, just swipe a piece of um, a little bit of epoxy down each side of it before you mount these, and that should lock them in place. Um, so total cost thirty five dollars for the roller. So when you start looking at the cost for the roller plus the a piece of high quality uh, plywood, um, you'll be probably getting to this whole project for less than fifty bucks. Um, so wait, you know, a third to half of what everyone else is charging for a completed board. So I guess it's up to you at that point whether it's a time versus money um, situation. But uh, when it comes to rollers, this is definitely the solution I found. I figured I'd uh, share it with everyone if, uh, so that you can, you know, don't have to go through all the trial and error that I did on this. But um, 
The other solutions I looked at was maybe using some skateboard grip tape, um, wrapping either the roller or putting it on the bottom of the board. But um, that's sandpaper, and so basically it's just going to tear one or the other up, whichever you don't put it on. Um, over time, it's going to just destroy things. So if you can find rubberized grip tape, that's great. Um, they make it for hand guns, but it's usually really pricey. So um, honestly, I think this is probably the most economical solution for a really high quality roller. Um, anyway, there you have it.